Yeah, this your boy Double XL. Ha! <laughs> November 5th, we got a black president. Man, I think they should change our, uh, uh, the national anthem to One Nation Under a Groove. Just, oh man, that should be the jump rate. I can't wait to Barack get in the White House. He gonna break so many records. Like, do y'all realize the first hot comb ever is about to be used in the White House? I don't think y'all understand. Barack cooking out this weekend at the White House is going down. Spades in the White House. Yeah. This double XL, you watching the Seven City Come Up Show. Yeah. Hood Platinum. <laughs> What's going on? Welcome back to the Seven Cities Come Up Show. This is a very historical show, number one. It's a new day. Definitely. Congratulations to President Barack Obama, our first African-American yeah. president. Your family, you're beautiful. You run all over that White House lawn with those dogs. Congratulations. I'm, I'm still in shock right now. Oh, How about man. you, Double XL? It's, it's, it's big. I'm not only am I excited that we got our first African American president. That's big. That's big by itself. But for the first time in my whole life, I got a whole new look on America. I'm, I'm kind of proud to be an American. Today. <laughs> you got to realize, we, yeah. you know, African Americans, we only account for 13% of the population. So we could vote, all of us could go out and vote. And it would make some change, but we couldn't do it alone. So, and I. I I, I can only say it plain. Ain't as many racist white folks as I thought. Only half of them are. That's right. <laughs> 49%. <anyway. laughs> 49%. And I, and I, you can't call all right. that racism. Some of them believe the other man, you know, McCain mm -hmm. was going to be the good man. But you know, some of the fundamentals of American racism is still there. But to see that much of the country is not, that they actually looked at the man for what he was, that's, that's the big part mm -hmm. to me. I got a whole nother light on America. A whole nother light, yeah. He is a good man overall. You can't, you can't knock him for that. He's a good man. And he's our first black president. Definitely. Get ready for it. So, I'm sitting here now with VA Zone Double XL. He has made a huge movement in this area. Hood Clap Entertainment, big up to them. What's going on, Double XL? Tell me about yourself. Tell us about you. Well, Double XL, first and foremost, representing VA by way of bad news, man. I'm just all for the movement. It's a new day as far as the government go, and I definitely feel like it's a new day as far as uh, Virginia hip hop is. It's, it's definitely a new day. You're starting to see things happen with artists and the buzz being blown up locally as opposed to getting the deal and having to come back. It's, it's, it's grassroots up now. We definitely got a grassroots movement here, and I'm, I'm happy to be at the forefront of that. Now, Sam, you're at the forefront, so what have you done? And what? tell us little steps you've made to get to where you are, because a lot of artists want to be, have that big buzz, but you can't do it overnight. Definitely can't do it overnight. All, I started, I've been rapping since I was six years old. Okay. So it's been a long time coming. Everybody know my main producer is my, my brother, Hershey, who does about 90% of my tracks. I started off rapping, and he beatboxed since six years old, seven years old. When I was about eight, we got in our first talent show, just to mess around, because we was kids, was rapping. We won it mm -hmm. by a landslide, and I feel like that that success planted us in us real early. Like we good, we 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 might can do this. Then we won the second one, then we won the third one, then we won the fourth one, and we did maybe thirty talent shows up to about. We lost our first talent show when I was in eleventh grade, okay. and we didn't even lose. We took second. It felt like losing. Right at that time, it was I'm gonna age myself a little bit, but it was about ninety six. Okay. You know, killing me softly was out short. He came and saw that. You know, yeah, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill killed won't that. Won't know where in the world you was gonna be that. No. You know what I'm saying? Uh -uh. So we took second. Do I still sound a little bit about that? This is I'm, bit, so, I'm okay. a very competitive right. person, okay. though, you know. Uh -huh. But we got our confidence built up early. You know what I'm saying? Early in life. Mm -hmm. So when the hard times did come, I was already enough confident in what we was doing not to let those things tear me down. What kind of hard times? What kind of industry hard times? Just that that whole Virginia mentality. They always thought I was good. People always told me I was nice. And you know, you got good music. People always felt the music. But you always had them feelings of, why haven't I made it yet? And that could, that could spin you into a cycle of self-destruction because you so you feel like somebody owe you so much, you know, waiting for, you know, Russell Simmons come knock on your door and say, hey, here's the deal. But, um, I think everything changed far as that go about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Russell was doing the, the Power Summers and he had one in Philly. Mm -hmm. So I did like any other rapper did. I burnt up all my demos, hopped in the car and went up there. And Russell said something to change my life. Russell was like, the day of the demo tape is dead. 
He said okay. it's dead. He said, get it popping in your hometown and we'll find you. Yeah. And like Russell said that, mm-hmm. now I can either say he don't know what he's talking about and go try to wait for him to come find me, <laughs> or I can or, listen to this multi-million dollar man to what he's saying. And when I applied, I was like, that's something I can do. Mm-hmm. I'm in Virginia, I might not never see Russell. But I can get it popping at home, and ever since that day we've been working. And I just been blessed with an opportunity after mm-hmm. opportunity to showcase myself. And I just make sure I deliver when I get those opportunities because they far and few between sometimes. Mm-hmm. But now they starting to get a little Look, closer. Very closer, and huh? yeah. So when you get those big like the warp tour you did, how was that? Oh man, what that, you, oh. The energy. Because I saw some of the pictures, and the whole crowd was completely different oh. from what a double X crowd was should supposed to look like. You know what I mean? So you got a whole new audience. I got a I got a high school friend who made good, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Grew up, got a good job, got a little money throw around, mm-hmm. and he, we always talked about rapping when we was young. And he a, he a successful young businessman. He a fight promoter, and okay. we reconnected about three years ago when he found out I was still doing the music. And he was like, "Man, I'm I'm, I'm ready. I'm mm-hmm. like ready for waste. Like I'm I'm ready to put money behind you." Mm-hmm. And so we talked and. Start building connections with some of the connects he had through the uh, professional boxing world. He got me up. I actually recorded most of my album, The New Deal, which is coming soon. Okay. <laughs> I recorded most of that up in the uh, Poconos. It was from some connects he had. My friend mm-hmm. is, is white dude, so a lot of his connects is, is rock dude. So we record in the studio up in the mountains in the Poconos. Focus. No phone mm-hmm. access whatsoever. No store to walk to. We mm-hmm. were stuck. But it was the best thing for us. We was in there seven days and we knocked out song for song for song. It's different going to the studio with mm-hmm. sneakers on rather than you stay in the studio and you go downstairs with your shorts and your, your cut up white beater with the holes in it. Okay. It's a whole nother vibe. But anyway, we knocking these songs out mm-hmm. and the whole time, you know, I know hip hop dudes. I don't care who it is, A-list, B-list, underground. If I see a hip hop dude and he been around, I'm gonna know who he is. I don't know rock like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just know the, the mainstream, you know, like everybody, Def Leppard, uh, whatever group you can name that got hits that you just hear, people like that. But it's people in there and they turn out to be important people and they like the music. Dude came to me and was like, man, I, I don't even like rap, but I like that. Um, we got this thing called the Warp Tour and it's coming to Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, you say you're from down there, we want to see you come through and perform. And at the time, I don't know what in the world a warp tour is. Right. I don't even know. So I'm like, word, all right, <laughs> a rock show? That's cool. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm not knowing what it is. My brother, Hirsch, who does the beats, whenever he, anything he on it, he, he type you on internet researching. He called me and was like, yo, go to this site. Mm-hmm. He found the Vans Warped Tour site. I was already so I said, sponsored by Vans. Then I, I go looking at the different pictures and seeing stuff like uh, an average of 30,000 people yeah, at every huge. stop, yeah. 15 stages. Me reading more bands' names I do hear, mm-hmm. but I don't know them, but just to hear the names. Like uh, Gym Class Heroes, I know I heard it before. I'm like, okay, they on this or such such on this. Mm-hmm. And we got out there. First, we in the studio like, man, let's do this. Let's get this rock feel. Let's add a guitar here. Let's do this. And after a while, he's like, man, nah, that's that. Right. When he came to the studio, he liked what he heard. If I'm going to go out there, I'm going to see. If I get booed, I'd rather get booed being me than trying to be like them. I said, man, we got to do our music, mm-hmm. man. We went out there and did our songs exactly straight, gutter, hip-hop, exactly how we do it. Mm-hmm. No, no, nothing added. No preservatives. Mm-hmm. And they loved it. They loved it. And it was definitely a blessing. And I found out that rock and hip hop are so connected. It all goes together. So yes. connected. Mm-hmm. How do you prepare for performances? Um, we got this thing where, where we get in the zone, me and my brother and other couple of my label mates we do where we just, first of all, we always get to a place early. That's because of me. They like to be late, but... I gotta be there early. I, I just gotta come in, sit down, and kind of soak up the atmosphere, mm-hmm. see what's going on. And I got this thing I do, they call it uh, psycho cybernetics. Basically what it is, is if you can see it, it can happen. You know what I'm saying? And I, I visualize. Ooh, I like that. What's yeah. it called? Psycho, 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 cybernetics. psycho cybernetics. Psycho cybernetics. But if, 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 you like can, if you can envision it, right. it can, it it can, can come to life. Mm-hmm. So I sit there and I just look at the stage and where I'm gonna stand and what I'm gonna do. And, how I'm executing, where the people gonna be standing at, and what it smell like in here, and what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yes. 
And it's not so much I get on stage, it's not so much of me thinking I'm a move here, mood is just mm -hmm. actual how the whole how what I'm gonna do with the, how I'm gonna interact with the crowd. Because wow. when I'm rocking, I'm not thinking about what my next movie is. I just do it. Mm -hmm. I'm the type I ain't I, I'll fall and roll on the stage on <laughs> like on accident right. and won't be embarrassed. Right. I'm rocking. And this is what might happen. I don't mm -hmm. care. Like I'm I'm in here feeling this, so 